Today I'm talking all about how to start a stationary business. There's not a lot out there specifically for invitation designers, and you know that's my passion. So the way that I started was a lot of trial and error, but now I run a six-figure stationary business, and I wanna help you get there too. Check out my monthly membership for stationary designers. It's called Stationary School, and it's full of art and business courses that will help you achieve huge things in your business. Today I'll reference a lot of other videos on my channel that go more in depth into individual topics, and you can check those out by clicking the little box that'll pop up in the corner. But this is gonna be a general overview of what you can do to create a successful stationary company yourself from scratch. If you want to join Stationary School, there is a link below this video to do so. First and foremost, everyone wants me to let you all know that the paper goods type of stationery is spelled like E-R-Y, not A-R-Y, like a stationary bike. I like to remember it by saying, don't be an a-hole. Now, there are three types of stationary businesses that you might want to start. We've got wedding invitations, personal stationery like note cards and branding projects, and then we've got commercial stationery like greeting cards and art prints. So how do you know what's best for you? What I do is wedding stationery, and that's typically going to be a more luxe end of the market with larger invoices and more hands-on experience with your clients. Plus, you get to deal with all the emotions of wedding planning over and over again. Personal stationery gives you a little more freedom and you can work with business clients on branding strategy and long-term marketing goals. If you like selling greeting cards and art prints, then you'll be coming up with a larger product line most likely and selling directly to retailers at wholesale or individual consumers. There will be a lot of smaller sales, but at a lower price point as well and your volume will be your friend there. It's important to niche down a little bit, at least at first, so that you're speaking to one specific customer instead of trying to speak to all customers in the world at once. Consider who the ideal person you want to sell is. This is called your ideal client. There's a video in the corner on this, and it'll help determine where you should be in the market. Ask yourself who this person is, what they like to do, what determines their buying factors, where do they shop, how much do they make, and what makes them want to spend money. This will all help you determine where you are in the market. If you want to sell to an older audience, you may market more on Facebook or in retail stores, for instance, whereas a younger audience might be found on Instagram or even crazy places like TikTok. Once you determine your ideal client, you can use those qualities to develop some good branding. I have a video on choosing a good business name that I'll link here, and one with a branding designer who actually designed my new brand that will give you some great things to consider. It's all about your internal message of why you're doing this and who you're doing it for, and going back to that ideal client. In all of your posts, marketing materials, etc., you'll act like you're speaking directly to that one person. Use language that makes sense to them and touches on their pain points and the solution that your product will provide for them. When you've decided who you want to serve, you should definitely become familiar with your design programs. Yay! The industry standard is the Adobe Creative Cloud, specifically Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign, and Adobe Photoshop, which you might have heard of. If you're familiar with a different program like Procreate on your iPad, for instance, you can technically use that for design, but eventually you'll get to a point where that is more limiting and you'll want something more robust. The Creative Cloud has been the design standard for many, many years for a reason. And if you're designing in standard programs, it'll be easier for you to find tutorials, ask questions, and work with printers as these other people will be more familiar with the programs that you're using. My favorite thing about Adobe is that there are just millions of videos out there on how to do it. I actually have a ton of these on these three programs on my channel, as well as some intro course to how I use them in the specific context of stationary design that you can sign up for in the description of this video. As you get familiar with designing, you'll also want to get familiar with printing and papers. Yay, the fun part. I have a video on invitation print methods you can watch linked in the corner. There are three that are gonna be most common probably for you, which are digital printing, letterpress printing, and gold foil stamping. I recommend starting with digital printing and watching this video about how to set up your files for print before you print your first project. Nothing will teach you more about stationary design than printing your first project because there's always a lot that goes into the process of getting your design to look the same on screen as it actually does on paper after printing. Should you print your work at home or outsource it? I outsource almost all of my printing, but I have two printers in-house that I use when I need to. Here's a look into laser printing versus inkjet printing. 
The truth is that there are people being successful printing in-house as well as outsourcing. So your decision will depend on the quantity that you need to print, the size of your individual space and your costs and your structure of your business. I have a video that talks about pricing printing in-house it often turns out to be more expensive than outsourcing, even if it doesn't seem that way at first. When making this decision, I focus on whether you want your time to be spent printing or designing and doing other things for your business. If you don't mind printing, then that could be a good place to start. But if color corrections and cutting paper sounds really dreadful to you, then it's worth it to purchase your prints elsewhere. So how do you find a good print shop? Two of the most common starter print shops in our field are Stationery HQ and Printswell Fulfillment. They both offer a wide variety and easy online ordering, which I love. I also think it's valuable to have a local printer on deck that you're comfortable with for rush jobs or things that just need a little bit more customization. Google stationary printers in your area and find one that's willing to chat with you and let you get to know their work. If they're not familiar with the type of printing that you want to do, that's probably not the printer for you. Keep moving. Creating samples not only gets you familiar with the process of printing your work, but also gives you something to take photos of to develop a portfolio. You can use stationary mockups to an extent, but at some point clients will want to see real photos of your work in real life, and they'll never be able to tell if they're for a fake job unless you use celebrity names or something, so don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> Here's a video showing you how to style stationary photos that you can take into consideration. Include some of your branding elements to keep things really cohesive. Flat lay photos will typically perform better online than angled shots, but those are valuable if you want to put them in a product listing, for instance. So you do want to take a variety of shots when photographing your work. Yes, this will all cost you a little bit of money, but both of these printers have small minimum print quantities and your business will require some investment to get started. Spending a little now will give you the experience to avoid major mistakes and issues on a larger job in the future. Not to mention the money that these samples will bring in once you're able to accurately showcase your work. You'll also learn firsthand about pricing your work. I have a full course on stationary pricing, but my main tip today is to cover your design time and your production costs. Typical markups in stationary are about two and a half to three times the cost of goods. If you're selling a custom item, you should also add on an hourly rate for your designs. And if they're not custom, art prints, greeting cards, for instance, then you can build in a little extra margin to cover that design time or rely on the volume you sell to cover that. How do you get your first real order? Most stationers will find that their first jobs are free jobs for friends and family. I am a huge fan of this concept actually because it gives you a chance to work with a client who has opinions and feedback without investing too much into it. I'd ask your friends if they have upcoming smaller projects you could help with instead of a full wedding invitation, I might try like a birthday party or a shower, bachelorette party, etc., and have them pay for materials but design the work for free. If you're selling greeting cards, art prints, or personal stationery, then you should ask for a photo of the product in use that you can use for marketing later, as well as a nice testimonial of the client's experience working with you. Once you're able to show work and talk about projects that you've completed, you'll be able to share your work with the world. That's exciting. I highly recommend using your own website, even if you keep it simple right now. Here's a video on what you should add to your first website. It's probably less than you think. I used Squarespace when I first started and it's a great platform for beginner designers. This will make you look professional and give your clients a view into your work and your process as well as your personality. I also love Etsy as a beginner platform. Here's a video on it for you. The biggest benefit to Etsy is that it has a built-in user base of millions and the interface is really familiar to people so they feel comfortable trusting sellers on Etsy. My general advice is that custom work isn't quite meant for Etsy, but if you're selling anything that's repeatable, then Etsy will be a great spot for you to sell your work. Other places to look for clients are at local networking events. If you're selling into the wedding industry, check out your local Tuesdays Together chapter on Facebook for upcoming events. Then think back to your ideal client. What platforms are they on? How are they shopping for products like yours? It could be local retail stores where you could sell your products wholesale, or it could be as simple as Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest. I make about 70% of my income from Instagram personally, and I've got a ton of videos here on YouTube about it. The main idea is that you're putting your work in front of that ideal client as much as possible. So if that person goes to book clubs, you should go to book clubs too, or get your work into the local libraries maybe. If that person hires a wedding planner, you should be networking with wedding planners and have them refer your work. The more you can get in front of those ideal clients, the more jobs you'll get. Okay, now what's next? 
There's honestly so many different steps you can take based on the goals you set for your business and the type of stationary business you want to run. I hope you'll check out some of the other videos on my channel to explore these topics further and that this video got you started on the right track for a successful and profitable stationary business. Tell me in the comments what type of stationary business you're trying to start and where you are in your journey. And I hope you'll join Stationary School for full courses, deep dives, and live trainings with me every single month. There's a link in the description to sign up.